Hey yo, make sure y'all check out that LG2. You heard Puerto Rican Mikey and Fru Quan. You heard? We smashing y'all all month with that. That's a fact. Z Man Suicide Polo with the Ski Man, Brownsville, Brooklyn, Dykeman, 200 block. We in a building like four janitors in a broom closet. You heard? And if you ain't catch up on all those episodes from season one, like I said, go to the playlist, The Real Story of LG. It got every episode in chronological order. You're so make sure you go watch each and every one of those. You heard? You're already snow cone. Get at me. And of course, if you absolutely love what I be doing over here on this YouTube channel, feel free to send a cash app donation. Yeah. Z Man. I'm playing it up like, 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 like I'm a little extra scared right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, like I'm punking out. No, I ain't got a problem with that. Right? I'd rather move away and, and do this on my time. Now, now when you and your man are out here armed in snow and the both of you are combined 380, 400 pounds. Oh, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. We do this to win, man. So I go back to the gallery and, uh, you know. So I was in Comstock when I was a kid. K.O. Smitty was in the box. You know, you had all the old times that revered K.O. Smitty. In time, I believe that was the number one most respected prisoner throughout the state. And I'm hearing stories about him. Like, I, I one of my men told me, he said, yo, I was with K.O. in Comstock another time, like, like in the late 80s or so, early 90s or some shit, late 80s. And he said, they in line. And police stopped, stopped the line for whatever reason. They started beefing to a dude that's like, you, step out. And K.O. Smitty just turned around. He's like, yo. And they, they basically told the line, hey, go down. K.O. Smitty stepped out. said, yo, ain't nobody going nowhere. Ain't no one going nowhere till he come with a swing through a nut to that dude. And shook the pole like they not used to that, right? But I've been hearing a lot of stories about that. You know, dude went back on the line, he went back to his cell safety, and I don't know if they got KO up about that jail or not. But now when I'm a kid, he's gonna be an older dude. And um, the stories I'm hearing is that he never bent over and spread his ass on the search, he ain't squat down. His shit was, I ain't spreading my ass cheeks for no man. Especially police, you know what I'm saying? And that's why he always got it on with them. To the point where when he's going on transfers, I'm wearing my sweats and I ain't wearing state greens. And he was letting him do it. But this dude was a professional boxer. He sparred with Muhammad Ali. This dude was sparring with a young Larry Holmes. And he got pictures to prove it. I seen this after I got to know him. Man. So he, I, I'm, I'm in long term keep lock. He's downstairs in the box. And he was in the box because... He refused programs, he refused everything. He's like, yo, I'm just sick of seeing prisoners fight each other. I don't even want to be out here with y'all. You know what I'm saying? He just, he just did, he started doing mad time in the box. And I heard all these stories about, so years down the line, I'm in all the correction facility, and, uh, and, and, and we hear, oh, shut the fuck up, my dude. And we hear, oh, 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 it's my palm raining, pop daddy. And I got a pit bull, Andrew Davis. Anyway, uh, uh, um, we hit K.O. Yo, K.O. here, K.O. here. He's on my gallery in the front of the gallery. Yo, draft bags of food and shit. With, like, draft bags, bro, was coming to him. This is everywhere he goes. So now I'm coming out on the weekends. I'm helping with the cell cleanup. I'm into box. I'm learning how to box at the time. I was boxing at the time. You know, I was training. You know what I'm saying? We, we, the, the program wasn't all for no more. But, you know, I'm running with the, the, the uh, boxing crew, basically. You know, we have to train, doing our thing. And he and Pop Dog now, you know, so me and him got close because of that love of box. We got pretty cool. We started kicking it. And, you know, and this is good. He came from Attica. He was 63 years old. He got a cane. His feet was fucked up because he had diabetes. And he knocked the sergeant out. And he was telling me, you know, he told me, he said, look, baby, sure these police respect me now. He said, don't think this shit ain't come with a cost. Most of my bones been broke twice. These police broke mad bones in me here in Auburn. You see, I'm not mad police out. They're always going to win in the end, but I'm never folded, man. He said, imagine y'all, young dudes together. They won't be beating no one up no more if y'all was on it. Like, you know, he was really on it. 
So now, I can't say to myself, you going on trances in a sweatsuit, you're not bending over for, for, for poly diet. Like, it's almost hard to believe, man. And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to visit my wife one day, my ex-wife. And uh, it's like, I'm married to prison. And can you come to the visit floor? And a dude shout out, he like, yo, it's a legend in the building. Boom, dude, yo, everyone starts shouting out. Yo, K, yo, K, yo. Boom, boom, boom. My, my ex-wife at the time, she was like, who's that? Who's that? He's so handsome. I love my wife. He's so handsome. Bah, bah. Who is he? I said, oh, that's, that's, that's K.O. That's my man. You know, he called me, sit down next to me. You know, made me feel we kicking about five things. You know, my, my wife, his people and shit like that. You know, and, but but what now at the end of this visit, when you come off the visit to Auburn, it's two at a time to get searched because it's two strip booths. <laughs> so it's K.O. And it's me. We leaving at the same time. So they open the door, come in. It's a young cop and an old cop. The young cop told K.O., step here in the booth. The old cop was like, no, 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 no. Mr. Smitty, just, would, would you mind putting your hands on the wall so I can give you a pat down? He said, sure. Pat him down. He's like, all right, you go back to your cell. You're good, Mr. Smitty. And the young cop was like, wait, for what? He said, no, no, I'll talk to you later. Then they looked at me, step in the booth and take your clothes off. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Word, and, and that's why I was like, oh shit, the legend is true. They won't even search that man. 63 years old, foot fucked up, with a cane, they would not search that man. That is the most respected prisoner in my eyes in the state of New York. From what I've heard from everyone, I know that man never had a fight with another prisoner. He never had a beef with another prisoner. He was squash beefs. And when he wanted to organize, whole jail shut down for him. When it's KO and that man, that man is a legend. I know we hear all the stories about the dudes that was snorting and they was killing. The dude who trained me in boxing, he's, he's dead now. He's gone. He, he, you know, he, he was um, accused of several homicides in prison. You know, one of them he got convicted. He got an additional 25 life. But not KO, he wasn't on that time, man. His shit was pro inmate rights. He was against the abuse. And all he fought was police, man. And all. Uh, but that's when I knew the story was true. And I was like, wow, that dude's everything they said he was. Like, he's a beautiful human being and all. I heard he ended up going to Walsh, to the hospital, and, and all, and passing away, man. But that's a man's name who should be a legend, who people should be hearing about, who people should be talking about. Man, he's just a good human being, a stand-up dude, and beyond a man amongst men. He broke so many police bones and police faces, it's like uncountable, you know what I'm saying? But that that's yeah, that was that was that was my experience meeting that legend, man, KO Smitty, man. Salute to him, man. Rest in power. That's crazy. You ain't got no pictures of son, do you? Nah, man. I bet you some of the old timers do though. I bet you maybe that's for calling or one. I don't know. One of them somebody got some pictures of KO. Somebody got pictures of KO. I guarantee you that. I will guarantee you that, yeah, you man. I wish I had a picture of my trainers. You know, Ali Sham, Shah Kim, Ali Sham is my man, another one, beautiful dude, man. He, I, I, I really never seen Ali Sham get into beef with prisoners. He's about sports, comedian, smoke his weed, make his hooch. He's always refereeing games. And um, at the time, man, uh, well, no, old time of Patty Irish, my man, nice with his hands. There's a bunch of dudes named Patty Irish, but there was two of them that was real known. They're in both boxes. They co people confuse. The people who don't know them don't know them. One from Far Rockaway and the older one from Hell's Kitchen. But Patty Iris had brought me to Ali Sham one day. He's like, yo, this is my man Tommy. He's a good dude. You know, he, he gets some shit sometimes, kind of like the ass, and he need to learn how to use his hands. And then me and Ali Sham got close, and, and he started training me. I, I had a little boxing guy. I trained a little bit on the few dudes, but he started training me. You know, and, and as I got better, we went and took on another kid that he was real green. At the time, dude named Shaq came came to the jail from East New York. You know, and this this he's um this is a lot of people who, who don't like Shaq Kim for various reasons. I've never had a problem with him. You know what I'm saying? Like like this is he and he took me on. He started training me. He was a lot more advanced with the unboxing training, man. But. If not for those two dudes, man, they kept me out of so much trouble in prison as young. I remember one day, I forgot what I was stressed out about, but I was just, I was feeling, I had like 11 years in, got like 15 years to my board, 
I was just not feeling it. I had to go outside and train, man. I remember coming out to that field house in Elmira, and Ali Sham and Shaq Kim was there. Shaq Kim got 51 of life. Ali Sham had been in jail at the time of 20 some odd years. And like, they're like, yo, what's up, T? What's up, Tommy? Boom. And they're happy, they're excited, like, they ready to train. You know what I'm saying? It's like, one of the dudes come down, train with us. We had the mitts. Once in a while, we get some sparring in on the low. You know what I'm saying? And in that moment, I wouldn't dare tell them I was stressed out. My man got 51 and a half to life. He'd been in prison since 1976. What the fuck do I look like telling him I'm stressed out? You know what I'm saying? He wish he had 26 to life. Because he started with 25 to life. You know what I'm saying? I'm doing 26. You know, on a, on a, on a, on a uh, minimum. And, and, but, you know, it was then dudes who really helped me, helped me stay out of trouble. And, and, and Shaq, you know, he was a known dude, man. He, he was into a lot of things, man. Was, I was leaving at that, man. He was into a lot of things, man. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of known dudes that was calling shots and all that. And he, it was making sure he was taken care of, you know, if, if you feel what I'm saying, man. And, um, and I remember one time I'm coming out and there's like mad tension out there. And somehow, Shaq came to the middle of that shot. I'm like, yo, what's good, dog? He's like, yo, don't, don't come out to the yard tonight. I said, what's up, bro? He said, I'm just, I wish you, you my man. He's like, nah, bro. He said, nah, you're not like these. He's the second boxing training terminus. Almost the same exact words. He said, you're not like these dudes. You're a good dude. You're young. You got a shot to make it out, bro. You ain't got to be like me, man. You got a shot. Oh, man, I love, love that dude for that, man. You know what I'm saying? Regardless of whatever... Other people didn't like him for various reasons and whatever they got to. He showed me love, man. He gave me a lot of wisdom, gave me a lot of guidance. At the Ali Shan. You know, I remember one time I'm out there when I when I'm training with with, with, with uh Ali Shan. And he told me that 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 because he was like, you know, one, one of the main five percent of dudes. He told me two of the uh airlines came to him and they're like, yo, why you don't train us? You train that white boy, by all by ain't check me. Like that's that that's my man. Second boy choosing. Still white boy, whatever. <laughs> but he's that second boy, you Cuban. Bye bye, it don't matter. White boy, whatever. That's my man. And you come out here and work. You want to work, you're going to come out here and work. We're going to come out tomorrow and we're going to work. We're going to see what you do. And I remember he told me, he said, Listen, we're going to go super hard on the workout. I want to see if these kids really want to train or not. And we broke them. We broke them on the workout because back then in prison, like, like a lot of the dudes who were training people in boxing, they would give you workouts that they know you can't complete. They know for a fact you can't do all these duck walks, all these miles, all these push-ups, this thousand jumping jacks I'm having you do straight. You know, they, they know you can't do that, but they want to see if you're going to quit. They want to see how much you want this, because you, you can't be a quitting box and shit's not a game. You know what I'm saying? Especially in prison. You a young dude, you boxing, people see that, they're going to try you. They're going to be looking to try you. You know, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, uh, but yeah, we, we end up breaking them in the workout. They ain't never come back again. They ain't never come back again. And, you know, and, and then I remember I was with them. They, 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 they came over to me. They're like, yo, what's up, you on train? Blah, blah. And she was like, what? You ain't come back for a week, man. Nah, man. Like, nah, that's why I don't train y'all. I gave you a shot. You, you ain't make it, man. You ain't make it, man. Go out there and start training, man. Go out there and get a condition, man. See you about a month or something. They ain't never come back. You know what I'm saying? But... It was those old timers, man, you know, who, who kept me learning how to box, how to defend myself. You know, I, and I look at it now, like, even at times where I might have lost some fights, maybe I'd have got fucked up worse if I didn't know how to box. You know, those times where, where, where an individual had, was involved with uh, altercations involving weapons. Maybe if my footwork wasn't so good, if my head wasn't so good, maybe I'd have been dead. I don't know, you know what I'm saying? But I'm, I'm super appreciative of them men for doing that, man. Super, super duper appreciative of them, man. But, you know, and, and because also there's so many bad stories, man. There's so many dudes that were notorious for this and that, that they was extorting, that they was selling drugs, that they was, all this shit they was doing. But you don't hear about the good dudes, man. You don't hear about the dudes who try to educate young people. You don't hear about the old times that, that was telling kids, like, yo, fuck this basketball court, hold on. I know you like boy, you got 20 life, man. You need to get in the fucking law library. Yo, you got your GED yet? You in school? What, what are you doing? You know what I'm saying? You want to learn something? Yo, I got some books. Why don't you read it up on this? You know what I'm saying? Why don't you come out and build with me? Instead of hanging out with the kids, do that stupid shit. Let's come out. Here's the book. We're going to come out tomorrow. We're going to talk about it. We're going to discuss it. You know what I'm saying? Shit like that, man. 
it's those dudes I appreciate because they, they, they was a part of me that I was always an intelligent kid and I always seen past this prison shit. You know, I, I might've got caught up in some shit cause I'm young. I'm young, I'm stupid. At times I want to make a name for myself. At times I'm just getting caught up and shit. You know, whatever it was, bad decisions. But I always seen past this shit, man. Like, like yo, what the fuck are we fighting for, man? What are we fighting for? As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm, I don't like talking about, I, I'd, I'd rather tell you about the times I've been fucked up and the pain I've been through than glorify this other shit. But I'm gonna share this one story with you in Attica uh, 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 some time ago because it brought me a level of consciousness. I've never gone to a beef over a phone again. But a quick story, I'm in the yard, man. At this time, man, uh, I had lost contact with uh, Mike Beck. But he came to visit me a few times in prison, sent me money, brought me some other things, you know, and uh, uh, so I could make money. And I talked to him for a few years, and it's, it's morning time in the yard. There's not a lot of people out. And, you know, the phones, everyone got their phones. So the phones I normally use, people was on it. But there were some other phones open because it's morning time, it's winter time, it's cold, it's snow, it's ice. So I get on the um, Jamaican phone. Cause ain't no one out, there ain't no one running the phone this time. No, you just get, you just, you just get on or whatever, right? So I'm talking to Mike, and I talked to him for years. And when, when I finished that click, I called him back. And then I heard a kid, he like, he like, yo, bro, yo, you double clicking? You ain't see son over here waiting? Bye bye. Jamaican dude, huh? And the other Jamaican dude, I, I didn't, I didn't like this dude. He had like two hundred something years. He, you know, he trying to extort everything. He be spazzing on motherfuckers. So he the kind of dude that if you around him, you like, man, this dude ever come at me like that? You know, it's, you know, could you expect him to? He, he, he that type of uh, aggressive, loud mouth dude, foul dude, crime ball. So, and and I, I don't know, you know, I, 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 I'm not good at hiding my emotions. So the two of them, right? And the one kid says, like, what? Why are you screwing your face up like that? I said, now I'll talk to him. I go, oh, man. Oh, man. They're like, all right. And spent off. And when they spent off, they was with a crowd of dudes, mostly Jamaican dudes, you know, a couple other dudes who was hanging out with them. So I'm like, fuck, I got to step over there now, right? I'm, I'm by myself with y'all. So I step over there, and uh, uh, the one individual, no, not, not, not the one who was waiting, the one who was speaking. Well, the one who was waiting was like the real troublemaker dude, right? And a uh, uh, home team come up to me. So this, so so both of them had like stepped out of the crowd. And the one dude was like, yo, why are you double clicking? You see someone's waiting for the phone? I said, listen, I I, I, I ain't no home team waiting for the phone. I'm, I'm not looking for a beef. But I'm just not going to let you bitch me because you, know, you got to think this is the environment in prison. If, if, if you could squash that good and save face and come to understand it's cool man it's better than fighting man but at the same time these are the kind of dudes they see any weakness okay they might start pressing you both of these dudes right so you're like yo you ain't see some waiting for the fight they both right there i said listen i see waiting for the phone so other dudes like yo don't play with me bro don't play with me man i said yo listen man this, this shit ain't this shit ain't really ain't gotta go here homie i see you on this phone i'm using the phone you ain't gotta be screaming me like this he's like what he stepped one foot back, like, 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 like if you want to square up and fight and put his hand in his pocket. He's like, what? What? With his hand in his pocket. And now we want snow and ice. You just said what, what twice. You fronting. You're not pulling that out right now. You think you're going to bitch me. You think I'm some skinny punk ass white voice. I don't, I don't know what he thought, right? You know, I'm all, you know, fuck 55, whatever. And I'm saying to myself, all right, I'm not about to roll around. I'm not about to let this dude cut me. Get it on, roll around the snow with a 200 pound cock, he's a motherfucker. This ain't gonna happen because I know he not gonna use this right now. I see it. I know where you're from. I'm a gun man. I'm, I'm not saying that in a proud way, but I was at that point, right? I was, I was like, you know what, man? You know what? My bad, man. You know, I back the ball from like, 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 yo, my bad, man. I, I ain't even come to this, man. And dudes like, love dudes like, yo, go. You know, better never have a problem over this phone. Guy. I said, listen, you ain't never gonna have a problem with me, and your man ain't gonna never have a problem with me, man. All good, homie. All good. I ain't looking for no beef. And I'm saying to myself, if this stupid motherfucker let me walk, he's on my cell gallery. And I had a gun, C block. I'm saying, this dude let me walk away. I, I have to tear him up now. Because he's the kind of dudes who want to take this weakness. And I'm playing it up. I'm playing it up like, 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 like I'm a little extra scared right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, like I'm punking out. No, I ain't got a problem with that. Right? I'd rather 
we were waiting and, and do this on my time. Now, now when you and your man are out here on the snow and the both of you are combined 380, 400 pounds. Oh, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. We do this to win, man. So I go back to the gallery and, uh, you know, start sharpening that knife. Sharpening that knife. Bam, 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 bam. And when y'all came that night, I ain't go out. My man was like, what's up? You ain't going out? I said, brother, I'm not going to. The next time I leave this cell, I'm tearing that dude out the frame. I'm not coming. I, I'm tearing him out. I already know what time it is, right? So the following day, breakfast time. I said, all right, he finished right now. My cell was all in the back, and they were popping slow. So when they finally popped my cell, everyone left the gallery. It's like two dudes at the front, and one dude bending down to tie his sneakers. The dude who reached in his pocket on me. But it's a clear view to the bubble now because everyone went out. And I got this, this nice little knife. I like little knives. Because a big one, if the dude know what he's doing, it's easy to grab it. I like that little knife. My hand's quick. You know, I know how to move that. You know, I'm not, again, I'm not glorified, but that's, I was trained for this. By my trainer, by my boxing trainer, by all the dudes. And uh, 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 I said, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm out now, Kevin. So I, I see what I, I see one of my homeboys is this uh, 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 blood dude. Oh, excuse me, he's formerly blood, a uh, Spanish dude. And uh, uh, and so I, I start walking with him. I get on line with him and shit. And we in the mess hall. I said, yo, I'm the chance to do that for B. He said, who? I said, so-and-so. And right when I said that, the dude was at another table. He called my man. We're going to call him Jose for the sake of this. He said, yo, Jose. And when Jose turned around to look, I turned around, I'm sitting right next to him. And he was with another dude, another Jamaican, and they grilling me. They grilling me, and they, they just grilling me. Then they looked at Jose, he's like, yo, when we go back, I talk to you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like, grill me, it's like if me and you, it's like if you hanging out with someone, I'm like, hey, yo, Laz, I saw ice grilling your man. I'm like, yo, I'm going holler at you, Laz. You already know it's about your man, right? I said, Jose, this is perfect. This is perfect, bro. I think he just making this too easy. I said, as soon as we go back on that gallery, I want you to go on his right side by his right hand and kick with him. What's up? What you want to holler about? I got it from there. So when we got back on that gallery, that's what exactly what Jose did. This motherfucker didn't even see it coming. I pulled that knife out. I tried to bury that shit in his fucking kitty. Boom! He's like, oh, and he turned around. I just want to hit him. Boom, 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 boom. His chest, I hit his arm, and you know, and he like took off a little. So I'm like, good. It's, it's two cell galleries. There were 42 cells, 84 cells. I'm getting rid of this knife. I might get knocked off for hitting him, but if I get rid of this knife, I'm not going to get a new bid. When you catch this knife, you get a new bid. So I go to take off. He's like, what? Where you going? Where you going? And he act like he want to get lost. So I come back with the knife. Now I run him down. You run away again. So I try to leave, and then he come back. So I can't go and get rid of the knife. He act like he want to fight. Then I get a ball, and he run away. You. You basically blowing it up. If you gonna get it on or, or, or take it on the hop, you know what I'm saying? But he was blowing it up. Then he grabbed a mop ringer. He swung that shit at me, and I weaved it just a little bit too slow. That shit caught me right in the head. Boom! You know what I'm saying? Boom! I slipped it. I, I came in on. I hit him again. Boom! 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 He runs off the gallery now because it was still open. Because dude was coming in. I'm jet off. I, I go to jet off, man. Police bum rush the gallery. I still got the knife. So in that situation, what you got to do, you got to throw it in the crowd. Wherever there's a whole lot of people, you got to throw it. Because if they try to make a case with you, the DA usually won't pursue the case. They're like, where did you find the weapon? Uh, 20 feet away from him, who was there? 30 inmates. How the fuck you know it was his? You know what I'm saying? So I, I throw the burner. Police come. They put me in the wall. Now, oh, you again. No, they, 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 they put the blows on me. They took me to the box. Now, I was, I did a year in Attica boxing for a straight from 99 to 2000. I had, I was just several years before that, when, you know, I had a beef with someone and tore a dude up. And, you know, I stayed in Attica for a while after that, left the jail. This is my second time in Attica a few years later. And all uh, police in the box comes in, like, yo, bro, you better hope he don't die. I said, what you mean? They, 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 they took him outside, man. He's not looking good. But, and I'm thinking to myself, oh my God, I got, at the time, let me see, how much time did I have to my parole? I had like eight years to my parole board. I just did all this fucking time. I don't know, what, what the fuck did I have? 17, 18 years, I'm getting at the end of this. I can make it out. You know, I wasn't getting involved in nothing, but I caught up with this stupid motherfucker, man. Huh? And I'm like, damn, please don't die. 
please hold down. I'm saying to myself, like, for a while, a fucking phone, man? A phone? You know, I, I, it, it, we, we can paint this two ways, man, lads. I can tell you that they tried to press me over that phone. I stood up and put that work in. Right? I'm off. I ain't like, you got to burn. You got to do what you got. And paint this shit like it's some glorious thing. But when you step outside, at the end of the day, my ex-wife at the time here about that, you just kill somebody for what? Phone. That's all it is to people outside. You got into a beef over a fucking phone and caught 25 life, 15 life, whatever it is, for a phone that's going to be there, man. Long after you gone, it's going to be a bunch of other motherfuckers killing themselves over it. You know, when you got, at the, before we just had four phones in the yard and we kept asking administration for yard, you got three, four hundred people on a block, four phones, of course we don't keep getting the beefs. And at one time in Attic and B block, the Muslims and some Latin dudes got into a beef over the phone and someone ended up dying. That's when they put two more phones out there. You know what I'm saying? We've been begging for this, man. And it took a motherfucker losing his life, man, over a fucking phone for him to put two more phones out there. And I'm in this box thinking, nah, man, not over a fucking phone, man. Not over. Luckily, the following day, man, police came in and said, yo, you luck, man. You just, he said, yo, three areas, man. It's like Sight was with this dude. You just missed this kid, man. You just missed collapsing his lung and you just missed puncturing his heart. And so, you know, make a long story short, he, he didn't die. But I'll tell you what, the rest of my bit after that, I ain't never get to be for a phone, homie. Never again, man. You know, I'm telling you, so it might sound exciting and war and this. It kind of sickens me, man. That I was fighting over that fucking phone. You know, we a bunch of locked up, frustrating dudes pressing each other. They're putting us in a position where you got three, four hundred motherfuckers, one of two or three families with these six little punk ass phones. Everyone ain't gonna rock like that, you know? Some people ain't punks either, and, 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 and shit gonna go down. And I was an example of that, you know, of, of being caught up in that, being caught in that mentality, man. And what if he would have died? Only I might be in Attica right now. I might be in Clinton right now. I might have still been there, you know what I'm saying? With a world of years to go, man. But that, that's that's definitely some of the stupid shit, man, we, you know, we, we should get into, man, all over just nonsense, man. No, I say, it, it, it's sad, man, but I'm, I'm glad that all uh, I woke up, man, you know, and, and as I went throughout the bit, I became more and more conscious, I became more and more skillful, and, you know, I just started dipping and diving, I just became a smooth dude, man, I became the guy that was, you know, helping people from dead beefs, you know what I'm saying, and I just, I just wasn't with that shit no more, bro, it just, it never made sense to me, man, and it still don't.